your mercy to us is everlasting and your word is just true. So bless us now as we read and study your word. Help us to apply it to our lives that we might do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Amen. All right. Um, in our message on Sunday, we talked about putting everything together, learning how to use the gifts that God has given us and doing the things together that God has asked us and we were committing ourselves to do the things that God has given us, using the gifts that God has given us. I wanted to give time just to see if anybody had any experience they want to share with using the gifts that God has given you. I have, I gotta be honest, I haven't completed everything, but I feel I have a gift of healing to a degree. Um, I know a couple of times I had an ongoing, what they call, um, what do they call it? Something headache, the dance. And I was driving home from work one day and my purse and everything was in the back seat. And I said, Lord, I can't drive like this. It usually lasts for 20 minutes. And I um, was experiencing that, and I just prayed to God. I said, Lord, my stuff is it. My aspirin's in the back seat. I can't get to my purse. Please take this away. And before I got over the bridge, I was on Haggerty and Five Mile. Before I hit the bridge, it was gone, and, and I was praising God all the way home. Mm -hmm. And the second one was Douglas had a... This was a maybe a year or so ago. He had a uh, bloody nose. I mean, I was at the point where I wouldn't consider him to the hospital. He lost so much blood. And I just prayed to him. I touched, I held him. I prayed, God, stop the bleeding. And I just, I praise, you know, we just praise God right then and there because he stopped the bleeding. What, what, what was it you asked us for? I'm sorry. I missed it. I was asking for so so Sunday we talked about putting things together, the things we've learned about the Holy Spirit, the things we learned about our spiritual gifts, and actually using our spiritual gifts in our everyday lives. And I'm just wondering if anybody had any experience since Sunday about those things. Okay. I think it's important to know. I appreciate your sharing, Sunday, that God gives us those things, and the 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 work that we have, the handout we had, tells us that healing is not just having miraculous healing happen. It is people who are prayerful who can help other people believe that God is a healer, can show them by their witness and their testimony that God is a healer, and provide that sort of framework for people to be open to believing in healing. I think a lot of people don't even believe that healing is possible. And just as you said, Cindy, people with I the know gift there's a of healing, of times. people with the gift mm -hmm. of healing are able to help other people see that healing is a possibility in their lives. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, one thing I think it's important to keep in mind is the healing that we want isn't always the healing that God's going to give that, you know, you have to, you pray for healing, but it's still, you know, for God's will to be done. Mm -hmm. It is God's will, but knowing God's will is an important thing. So I think the, 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 the gift of discernment is vital in that area as well. And so um, one of the things that I liked about the handout that we have, I think in the back of that, they talk about spiritual gift clusters. Yeah, I was looking at that. So healing and discernment are in the same cluster. That sort of nurturing gift, the helping, the faith, compassion, healing, shepherding, exhortation, and discernment. Those are in the same cluster, which means that as we are working together, discernment and healing go together. And so what I want us to be able to do is look at how the gifts that I have 
might work with the gifts that you have so that we can work together to bring about a change in our community and our homes and in our families. That our spiritual gifts are not just for within the four walls or within my own home and family, but our spiritual gifts are given so that we might be able to help one another as we go forward and build the kingdom of God. And so it won't be the last time that I ask you about this because part of our sermon on Sunday was about committing ourselves to doing mm -hmm. things, committing ourselves mm -hmm. to saying, yes, Lord, mm -hmm. I believe that you have filled me with your spirit. Yes, Lord, I believe that you had given me at least one spiritual gift. And now I'm committing myself to using that for your glory and for your honor. Can I ask a question? Sure. D Douglas and I have, uh, and we've had people pray over us to be healed of the Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we have good days. Sometimes we have bad days. And sometimes I think, does God, I, I mean, I believe God can heal us. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I think we experience it so we can help others that have some kind of affliction mm -hmm. and um you know trying to work through it you know is that the is that a good way of looking at it sort of i mean we could maybe not be totally healed because maybe there's something down the line that god's got for us to do uh -huh. and therefore we're not completely rid of it I think, I think, I think as Connie mentioned, healing happens in different ways, in different spaces, in different mm -hmm. different places that God chooses to do things. I think mm -hmm. one of the things that we have to be careful of is that, you know, God is not Santa Claus. He don't give me what I want when I want when I want it. But mm -hmm. it is a place of learning. And one of the things that I've learned, I've, I've my parents had chronic illnesses. I've known people with chronic illnesses. Um, and it's not that they ever stop praying for healing. Right, right. But in the midst of their illness, they give glory to God for every day that they have. They give glory oh, yeah. to God for every moment that they have. And they demonstrate to other people how you live. I, I think that's what she was saying. Mm -hmm. I, at least it sounded to me like that's what she was saying. Yeah. Uh, that it, that yeah, it, 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 you're well. enabled right uh, to to live, um, and so that someone else can see that it's possible. Right, um, right. Um, I feel that way about arthritis. I have arthritis. Most people never hear me say anything about it. You wouldn't imagine. You can't imagine how bad it really is, and and yet, um, I think that. Um, and I pray just like you, and and I declare and decree that I'm healed. And what I discover is that I get when I make when I've made it through the day, then I know God did what He wanted to do with me mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. And um, and and I and I'm like you. Some days are 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 really bad. The last two days have been pretty bad. Um, and but then there are times, you know. But then, when you when you see yourself accomplish something you didn't think you could, mm -hmm. uh, in in the midst of what you're dealing with, you know God is there, mm -hmm. and and He knows um, 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 that I desire total and complete healing. I desire it. I I, I seriously do. Mm -hmm. But I but I. If that is not his plan for me, because I, the scripture says, says he says he knows the plans he has for me, plans to prosper and, and, and plans for my good health. Well, some of it is I didn't, you know, I mean, not in terms of, of arthritis, because I, my understanding is that most people get it. Most people it doesn't have anything to do with how you lived or what you, <laughs> what you did, do what you ate, like some of the other things we deal with. Yeah. But um, you know, they're just you just know. I I I love to be free of it. My mother had it, 
and I, I, I watched her with it. And I, there are days when I feel like I'm traveling down the same road, but, and it's a fight. Sometimes he heals me from being depressed about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, I, I, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause some days it's like, oh my gosh, I, I can't mm -hmm. move it. All right. But the victory is or having joy get, in the midst. Or, or or just before I get up in the morning, I feel like my my whole body is numb until I start moving it. And then when I get up or, you know, start moving, oh, it's like, thank you, Lord. And then when we go to bed, <laughs> I pray every night, thank you for thank you for a day that I was able to move about and mm -hmm. get stuff done that I needed to get done and got me through getting mm -hmm. it done when I didn't think. I would be able to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. Just right. getting dressed is a miracle every morning. And then, yeah. I mean, then, really, I think about people who probably have it worse than myself. And mm -hmm. I just think to myself, I go, thank you, Lord. At least I can dress myself still. Yes. You know? Oh, I say that no, I am grateful. <laughs> yeah, I am grateful. That. It is that gratitude that helps yeah. us share with others God's goodness. Even mm -hmm. in the midst of difficulty, it's that gratitude that helps us shape God, God's goodness. My father had Parkinson's and he never set about complaining about his situation. Mm -hmm. He whatever no, whatever I came mean, his way. There's no point, really. But again, that but we know people who have headaches and complain yeah. about having a headache all day long. So if that's what you know, that's true you hear about them. How we talk about our healing is vitally important that God is healing me, God will heal me, and that God is not punishing me here, but I give God glory for every opportunity and every situation he brings me in. Any big thing well, I, I was, have to do, I always ask him, God, just through this, and he does, and I'm mm -hmm. so grateful. Amen. I was looking at the uh, clusters, and, mm -hmm. and so... I see um, that the gift of discernment, which I have, is in the same cluster as shepherding. Now, I didn't actually, I think I had my own thought about what shepherding was. Mm -hmm. But when I look at this, I see that I, I, I can relate um, uh, some of the places I've been in mm -hmm. and that have been difficult, but God, but God has used those places <laughs> for me to minister to other people. Um, 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 grief, uh, um, yeah, um, you know, when my first husband passed, um, a lady told me, she said, I can see why. She said, you are an example of how to get through this. And she didn't know I was at home crying and alone. But um, she said, I, I just don't know how you do this. I don't, mm -hmm. When we see you, I don't know how you do this. And so God has set it up so that from time to time, you know, there's someone who is in my path who has lost their spouse. Uh -huh. And God allows me to minister to with that person uh -huh. uh, because grief certainly is a process. But he allows me to minister with that person to help them see, you know, how do you get to it? No, how... I got through it may not be how you get through it, but right, one you know right. one thing is true is that I don't have to hold on to God, and it's the message that i and I've noticed that again i I keep finding myself mm -hmm. particularly um right after my husband passed, there were more young widows I had never experienced <laughs> so many, but there I was ministering to young widows. Mm -hmm. Right. And so shepherding is that gift of guidance, the gift of being able to walk alongside someone and yeah. share that experience with them. And I think God gives us that opportunity to share, especially if we've had similar sorts of experiences. That's very good. Thank you for sharing that. Because I think the body of Christ needs people who have had experiences to walk with other people through those experiences. Yeah. You know that. Oh, yes. No, no, Connie, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say my 
probably the one issue I had with growing up in the church is that as I got older, especially when I started having, you know, my family and I would have different issues, you know, as a, as a young mom or whatever. And I would see issues that I was having that, you know, other people didn't have these issues Uh because I think a lot of times the, the things that people had going on, they talked about like maybe amongst their close friends, but yet, um, because it it wasn't shared uh-huh. congregationally, I guess uh-huh. that you know you get. I growing up, I had like a you know like a, a like the halo effect type thing of a lot of people. <laughs> Because I didn't, I, to me, they nobody had issues. Exactly. And when we had, um, when three of my kids were little, we had a mom's group. And the the little mom's group was a Bible study. And I'll tell you, it didn't last very long because I think part of it was we couldn't be open and honest Mm -hmm. is like Mm -hmm. people would go to this, this meeting and, Oh, my kids did this and my kids did this and my kids did this. And I remember sitting there thinking, well, I obviously don't fit in this group (laughs) because (laughs) mine are destroying everything in the house. (laughs) And, you know, they don't want to go to bed. And, you know, it just it it almost was like a competition. Uh And it just I, you know, the pastor that we had at the time, he and his wife weren't able to have kids. And so they had adopted and she was one of those moms that was going to do everything, you know, natural, no sugar, you know, all that type of stuff. And it was like, Mm -hmm. oh, you know, to me, it was like very unreal, (laughs) (laughs) unrealistic. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, and I always thought about that, that that was one thing that, you know, you needed, Mm -hmm. you know, having, if I would have had somebody that would have, kind of like help me along and you know because I didn't even want to tell my mom you know everything was going on I mean she probably knew a lot of it but mm-hmm. you know because I didn't want to be less in her eyes because I couldn't control my children <laughs> <laughs> so that's, but that's, yeah but so I said think it. That's, you, said, you said it they weren't being honest mm-mm. Yeah, they and I honest, think so. They didn't create a safe space for you to even be honest, mm-hmm. right? And I think you know, I know with our you know praise and prayer time at church, I think that's one thing that people are able to be open and honest about you know struggles that they're having. At least mm-hmm. I hope mm-hmm. they feel mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah, all too often, and we got because I grew up in church too, kind of, and the saints acted like they walked on water. They never yeah. had an issue. They never had a trouble. They never had difficulties. And it was just amazing to me to see that they never shared those kind of things with them. Yeah. So then when you have those problems, you think there's something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. There was this woman that, that I knew who came to church and every time she came to church, she had a great testimony. But her husband was beating her. Oh. Uh-huh. And people knew. But she never she acted like nothing was going on. Mm. Well, I mean, th- that's kind of how I was brought up, period. I'm listening mm-hmm. to you all. And and. Um, I was when I, I was brought up at a, at a time where the the women, first of all, there were the the fathers didn't come to church very often. They came on Easter and Christmas, but the women, the stories about the women, the one thing that they did that you knew about everybody was when their husband beat them up, and mm. or, or there were fights, and it became like the norm. Oh, you know, so and so husband was acting up. He got drunk for Saturday night and beat her and beat her. Mm-hmm. And then she'd be at church and everybody knows she was beaten. 
and she'd get a few hugs and then next week somebody else hugs me. They made it so normal. Mm-hmm. It, it, mm-hmm. I mean, they took away, it took away from, it almost sounded like your husband didn't love you if he didn't mm-hmm. beat you and if he wasn't drunk on Saturday. Nobody even expected him to come to church. Mm-hmm. Church full of women because nobody expected the men to come. So it was a terrible it was a terrible, you know, somehow I knew something wasn't right about that. <laughs> right, right. And so what we have to do is be able to create this atmosphere where people can have those sorts of conversations. One of the things that I love about First Corinthians chapter 12, First Corinthians chapter 12, I think is verse 21, where Paul writes that the eye can't say to the, the hand, I don't need you. Am I mm-hmm. quoting that right? I'm not looking. First Corinthians. Oh, I'm in 10. I'm sorry. First Corinthians chapter 12. I think it's 12. verse 20, 21. I mean, look, okay. Verse 20 says, uh, yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The 21, the eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The hand can, can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually mm-hmm. the most necessary. Yes. yes. You want me to keep going? Yeah. And the parts and the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. Mm -hmm. This makes for harmony among the members so that all of the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. Thank you. Thank you. And when I read that scripture, it reminds me that we all need each other. I can't say that the gift of this is better than the gift of that, or because that's the pastor, he has all the all the knowledge. No, we all have to work together as a body. I love the way that Paul talks about it as the body of Christ. And my mm-hmm. faith he, gift have to work with my discernment gifts, have to work with my shepherding gifts. And they all need assistance from those people who have the administrative gifts. We have to learn ways to work together to build the body of Christ and to build one another. And in our conversation is going to be honest with each other when we struggle in certain places. God knows we all struggle. He knows I have no reason to try to pretend for you because you know I struggle. Or you ought to know. Mm -hmm. None of us get it right all the time. But our struggles at sharing those things helps us to grow stronger together and helps us find ways to put it together. I think when I think about my upbringing in the church and the churches I went to, there were great saints of God in there, but they never learned how to work together because they could not be honest with one another and share with one another until they were brought to a place where they had to be able to share with each other. And my prayer for us as members at Riverside Park is to find ways to share our gifts with each other so that we can learn to work together to put things together so God will be glorified. And so that we don't have to be embarrassed when our kids don't act right. Or when things don't go the way I think they ought to go. Because God has put the body together. I'm sorry. Hello. God has put the body together as it brings, as it as it as it sees fit for Him. We have to learn how to work together. What prevents us from working together? One of the things we've been talking about prevents us from working together. This false modesty, this pride, where I can't show you that I don't have it all together. (laughs) that prevents us from learning to work together. This sort of presentation where I must be perfect 
and everything in my life must be perfect. Or at least on Sunday morning when I present it to you, when you see me, everything looks perfect and I never have any issue. Go lay down. That prevents us from working together. And so God puts the body together as it pleases him. Some things get more honor than others, but that doesn't mean that they aren't important. We must learn to value one another and value the gifts that God has placed in each other so that we yeah. might be able to share with one another. As I shared on Sunday, the gift of teaching is not just teaching a class, but helping people see the truth in God's word. It's not just taking little kids and teaching them Sunday school lessons and, Lay down. and, and songs and that sort of thing. The gift of teaching is about helping people gain insight into the word of God. I think teachers are revealers. They help reveal the truth to God's word and, and, and God's word to other people, help them show God's word to other people. And it is our responsibility to learn how to work together to get those things done. What else prevents us from being able to have our gifts work together? Anything well, else? Well, I mean, I'm not understanding and knowing our gift. Mm -hmm. If I can't, if I don't know it, and I, you know, <clears throat> there have, you know, been, there have been a few of us in this class who have. Mm -hmm. uh, consistently been here talking about spiritual gifts but we have a congregation who you yeah. know i don't know if they know already mm -hmm. um several people took the packet that you put together but what prevents us from sharing together is is, is if people don't even know they have a gift mm -hmm. don't even understand that you know god has gifted me and he's he expects me to do something with it right and sometimes we don't feel like that contribution is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't feel like what I got it, anybody would want to have. And that's just the thing I think the scripture here tells us. Those things that we think are most unimportant are usually most valuable to people, to the church. And so we discount ourselves by saying, I'm too this, I'm too old, I'm too poor. I'm too inexperienced. I don't have the education. I don't have this. I don't have that. And we discount what God has placed in us. I'm glad you handed out the packets. Uh, yeah, I did. I handed out the packets. And I, there's so many people who took them who I've never heard say anything about them. I'm about to mm -hmm. go around asking questions because it's important that we all oh, try to no. look at it and try to well, see where no, God has placed us in the body. It's important for us to see how God has done these things for us and to be open to admitting it. But there's so many people in our congregation who took the packet and have never tried to work through it. No. I, I know everybody can't come on Wednesday night, but I think it's important that everybody at least take the step in saying, Pastor, I've looked at this and this is where I think God is leading me. How can I make that work in the church? I think that's vitally important for us. And so I would encourage you, as you have conversations with members of our congregation about these things, that this be one of the topics you talk about. You can talk about the game, you can talk about the flowers, you can talk about the weather, but have you have conversations about what did you do with your spiritual gifts inventory? What did you find? What did you discover? Mm. And then let's find yeah. ways we can work together. And, and in a way, it's a way of holding people accountable. Mm -hmm. You took the packet, so you need to tell me what you did with it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that would help us grow cool. as a church too. Knowing, yes, you know, it would. Knowing the gifts that different people have, you know. Mm -hmm. what, with them. You know what people are people are sitting back counting 
well, we don't we don't have this many members. We only, you know, we don't have this, we don't have that. But what, you know, what we God is waiting for us to acknowledge what we do have. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I often think, you know, well God, are you it <laughs> is that why we still are we still right here because our church has not unified in wanting to know the truth and wanting to use everything God has given us. Mm -hmm. Cuz we really have to get off our duffs and and participate. Right, right. So if you and take a look at not this, just sit listen to the Sunday sermon and that's it, you know. You got to do what you yes. got to do stuff. That's what we said, putting it all together. So if you look at the list we had generated before, mm -hmm. what would God do with this many gifts? Yeah. What would God do? What's possible in our community? If we took our teaching yeah. gifts and our administration gifts and our faith gifts and our knowledge gifts and put them to work, what's possible? Anything's possible, God willing. So much, so much, so much. So much and this, is, this, this is just the four or five or six of us <laughs> who came to the session to share our gifts. There's not everybody in church. What if we just took these things and said, I'm going to use it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to have these conversations with somebody. So when I come to church on Sunday, I'm going to ask sister such and such, hey, what your spiritual gifts inventory say to you? It holds us accountable with one another, but it also yeah. opens to us the possibilities of what God could do. Mm -hmm. Well, it also helps us to get to know people, too. It helps us to do that, yes. Mm -hmm. But it, You know, it, because a lot of times when, when Connie was talking about, you know, the mom group, and not a lot of people gave information, one of the things you have to have is you have to establish trust. If mm -hmm. you don't have trust, you're not going to open up. I mean, we've been, Douglas and I have been in groups where we've had Bible study go on for years and it's like, you know, we're not getting down to the nitty gritty because nobody will open up. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, for people are reason, I don't afraid know. to commit. People are afraid to commit. And so as long as I don't know, <laughs> I just stay over here in the I don't know zone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that way I'm not accountable for anything. I, I, I just go, oh, you know what? I didn't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and, and I didn't know and I didn't know but you want God to come when you call you want to remind God for every of everything he promised you but what he asked of you mm -hmm. you you are in the I don't know zone I don't know mm -hmm. you know I didn't know <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> there so I don't know <laughs> good, good evening B. and good we wouldn't see. like it if God said well I don't know yeah. Right, 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 <laughs> right. And, and so we can't. I don't know. You didn't want to do this, Cindy. So I don't know. We we can't change a lot of other people, but we can say to ourselves and to one another in this room today, "I got this gift. I'm going to use it. I'm going to have a conversation with at least one person about the spiritual gifts inventory." I okay. will. Can I make the? Can we make that commitment? We could also encourage. I will. That we could also encourage people that took the packets. Well, yeah. pretty pretty much everybody in church. Be amazed at what. I will because I also think uh, one of the things that's going to you know we're making some changes to the um, the uh, children's church teaching or the chosen generation teach, and I'm going to. Uh, not maybe not the whole packet, but I'm certainly going to sit down with our young people about spiritual gifts. You know, if mm -hmm. somebody had told me this when I was their age, <laughs> right? Um, the first thing that happened to me, I mean, Sunday when I started talking to them, they had been been to school. It was their first week, and every one of them said, "I said, how was the week? Stressful, full of anxiety, 
This was their answer. It was stressful. It was so, it, there was so much anxiety. There, the minister Jeannie, it was so much anxiety. And I'm, we have to teach them. And so, yeah, my plan is to get uh, uh, at least some copy of those uh, spiritual gifts and, and start to think about it. They're mm -hmm. old enough to think about this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 73 and I just figured mine out. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're right on time. Um, yeah. You're yeah. right on time. Never too late. Well, when I read all that, looked at all the stuff, and it, it was just God revealed it to me. And I'm like, you know, because a lot of times when you say something to somebody, it kind of sounds like you're pumping yourself up. Mm -hmm. But it dawned on me, this is not, that's not it. This is mm -hmm. actually my gift. Right. That's your yeah. gift of exhorting people and shepherding them and giving guidance and talking with them. I think you've got a great gift of never meeting a stranger. Yes. <laughs> and so I thought I, that that's a commitment we can make, can we? That we'll have at least yes. a conversation with one person and say, hey, did you do the spiritual gifts inventory? What were your results? And if they didn't do it, say, oh, go do it and come back next week and tell me. You'll be amazed. You'll be so amazed. So you yes. you gave everybody in church got one. So you Every, could go up to anybody and ask them that. Everybody in church got one. I went around and put one in people's hands who didn't take one. I'm in. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I I'm can in. do it. Yeah. Amen. Worst they can say is I didn't open it up, and it's like, oh, but you'll be amazed. You right. got to do it. Just mm -hmm. start a little at a time. If uh -huh. they didn't do it, say, oh, but you got to do it. It was so exciting for me. Yeah, y'all know how to top stuff up. <laughs> it really, but it was. I mean, <laughs> exactly. It's the truth. It, it, it was, was like right. It's true. You know, when I first opened it up, it's like you know, I'm not one to study or any of that. I'm just honest, and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, this was, this was really cool. I was like, wow. Yeah, it was cool. So, mm -hmm. you know. yeah. Yeah. And and, and I'm, I'm like, Jeannie, if somebody had told me this when I was 12. Yeah. That this is what God yes. is calling you to do. Imagine what I could have done. But you know, when I was 12, mm -hmm. all they did is stick you in the choir and say, sing. Well, we, everybody, right. <laughs> everybody was in the choir. We have some young people that are hungry, though. So this is the time to, especially Pat, uh, Minister Jeannie. Mm -hmm. I think she's she's really got. Uh, you got it going on with the kids, honey. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> imagine, you. imagine how one, challenge. how wonderful it would be if you just said to them what we just all just said, encourage them in some way. Because mm -hmm. in the instructions yeah. in this packet. Uh, and I think Minister Jeannie even mentioned it, is to look at various translations. Mm -hmm. So I went out yeah. and bought a couple different translations. And I picked up a New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's like my favorite. Today. That's like... It's my I favorite. Read that, I read the scriptures, you know, the four Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. three of the Bibles. And the one that stuck out and made the most sense was the New Living Translation because it was almost like written for the 21st yeah, century. It is. And it's it like, is. wow, I really like this. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I it do. Is. I, it's my favorite, really is. So that could be one encouragement. It's like, well, go get this Bible because it just, it spells it without these and thys, you know. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Right. There are many translations. I know the New Living Translation is amazing. I love the message translation. It's sort of an interpretation, but it is one that I like. I tried <laughs> to find that one. I couldn't find one like that. So this was the closest. Or the yeah. Amplified. is The Amplified is pretty uh, clear, too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can find the message translation online. Okay. That's probably the better way to look at it. So... Uh, I know I talked to you about the 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 U version Bible app. There's also something called Blue Letter Bible that has you know, several that. several versions of the scripture online, and so those are places to do. But 
I think it's exciting that these things are, it's good, exciting for me that these things are exciting for you. And all we have to do is keep talking it up. Yeah. Make it a, make a commitment. I would go so far as to tell somebody, if you really want to understand it, the new living translation, man, I would, that would, that would be the best, at least right now. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm going to add the new living trans, mm -hmm. new living translation. Okay. I'll have to look that up. Did you get the U version app for your iPad? Who, me? Yes. Yeah, that's the one where they talk to you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so then you living. already have the No, I listen to it at night. And I, it, honestly, I fall asleep with that when they're talking to me. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Plus, when I'm working, I have uh, my, uh, well, I, I've been listening to the Bible on that uh, uh -huh. with my ear, you know. It's it's mm -hmm. easier to hear it. I don't know, you know, I can concentrate a little better because when I'm working, it's pretty, you know, I don't really have to concentrate on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, that's what I've been doing, listening to that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, well, I, I learn better if I hear it. And yeah, I see it. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I think it's really important, but the new the. The U version app has the New Living Translation as part of it. Oh, oh okay. Well, that's what it's called, U version app. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, the Bible app. Yeah. It's called the Bible. Mm hmm. Okay. And so I, I think those are those are things that if we're excited about it, and people see our excitement, then that excitement is contagious. Mm -hmm. So. So I just want to recap. We're committing ourselves to talking to somebody at church on Sunday. I'm asking that they finish their spiritual gifts inventory, how excited it is. Right? Right. Right. And, and we're committing right. ourselves yeah. just to encourage our young people. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going out of town. <laughs> That's why when I'm so scared. I'm so scared. They'll be there when you come back. Okay, I can do it. I'm leaving tomorrow for Taos for four days. Oh, wow. That's why I'm so late. I got sidetracked. I just, I'm telling you, a, a, a mind's a hard thing to waste. <laughs> yeah. Well, I need you to keep your mind. I need, I'm trying. You're going to New Mexico? I will do it, though. I'll do it when I'm up north. I'll do it oh. with people that I'm with that are not. Can you do it with people that aren't really Christians? Sure, you can tell them, God has given me these gifts. What kind of gifts do you think God has given you? And just well, have a conversation. I can do that. What we have to be able to do is communicate with people about the things that God is teaching us. Right. That's how we grow. So encouraging our young people, talking to the, the saints about the, the, the spiritual gifts thing, sharing Bible apps that you find useful and that sort of thing. I think those are things that help us form a community, help us learn how to work together so God is glorified in all we do and say. And that's the commitment that we have. The scripture says that one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000. I'm counting six. What can six people do? <laughs> Amazing thing. You know, Amazing. Dee, what you could do is ask all those questions of your friends and have them answer them about you, like, and then see what scores that they can each person comes up with mm -hmm. to see if they, if what you project to other people is the same way you think about yourself. Well, they sure would understand the spiritual gift part of it. If you ask the, the questions, you know, like say, okay, I want you to think about these questions, but think about me as how 
<clears throat> you would answer the question about me. Mm -hmm. Like, I enjoy teaching the Bible to a small group. Well, they might say, well, no, that's not really B and score you really low. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a that's a, the eighty questions there, so that's a, so you can do that. But again, it's about involving this sort of talk in your regular conversation mm -hmm. because you're learning about yourself. You're learning that God has given you precious gifts, and it's important to share that with people, even if they don't know Jesus. This is what I'm learning about myself, mm. and these things I thought were just useless is the way that God is using me to minister to other people. Mm -hmm. And that, my brothers and sisters, is exciting. I can't wait to hear about your trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, be a, great. It'd be challenging a bunch of baseball players. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. It'll be great. I'll be sitting by the water with my books. That's the, that's a good But I thing. think Connie's idea could be a, a open a whole can of worms, though. <laughs> if, if I ask them what, you know, what do you guys think my gifts would be? I know two of the gifts that I think are spiritual gifts. So they probably would recognize. But then, they, you know, you know, you, you get a little defensive. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd have to tell them, actually, that's a good thing, too, because I'd have to tell them that I'm working on that. And the only mm -hmm. way I can work on that is through God who strengthens me. Exactly. Amen. It's not a debate, Amen. not no. an argument. No, it wouldn't be that. a question. No. no. And if you don't see it, thank you. God is helping me. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. I think that's a great way of doing it. Amen. Yeah. What we have to do now is commit to doing it. All right. And I'm ready to see what God will do. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Let's have a word of prayer this evening. I, I, B is going on a trip. We want to pray her safe travel. Okay. Amen. Safe travels, B. Have a good time. Thank you. Pastor's Amen. got just do it on his shirt. That's right. Just That's do right. it. Do it. Well, <laughs> I wore it on purpose. Okay. Just do it. Oh, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your encouragement to us today. We commit ourselves to doing your will and your way. We will continue to talk about the gifts you've given unto us so that you might be glorified. Bless us as we travel. Bless, us our, bless our homes. Bless our bodies. Bless our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Right. Good night, everybody. Have a great Good one. Good night. Night. I'm making a phone call. I'm starting tonight. All right. All right. Go, B. Yeah. <laughs>